All right, guys. So what is going on in today's forecast? We will be looking at our current system that is dropping all kinds of wintry precipitation across the south right now and also surrounding regions. We are currently looking at all kinds of frozen precipitation, including snow, ice, and sleet across the south, including various states such as Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Illinois. All portions of Indiana and Kentucky are also being included to an extent on this as well. Other than that, we do have shower activity across the southeast and also in that range to the south of wind station, as well as light snow across the northeast and a little more shower activity to the south across Pennsylvania. Other than that, we do have rain that is ongoing across the southwest this time. However, other than that, let's just get started in today's forecast. Alright, so let's look at our current headlines for the nation. We have widespread wind chill advisories for Montana, the Dakotas, and pretty much most of the plains and into the Midwest in that light blue teal-ish color that is being seen across the map there in the northern United States. And then we also have widespread wind and weather advisories, wind and storm warnings that span all the way from Texas Mexican border all the way to West Virginia. And that's the wind and weather advisories in the light purple shaded region. There. And then the pink shade region, that's where we have our winter storm warnings for Texas and Oklahoma, and then as well as from Missouri into Illinois. And then we also have our ice storm warnings in effect for Arkansas, Tennessee, and Northwest Mississippi at this time. And then to so that we do have a flood watch for Texas, Louisiana area. But other than that, there's not a whole lot else to say about this ongoing activity. Alright, so let's go over all right, so let's go over this back graphic more in detail. So rain happens when when we're starting just below the cloud level, even more than the cloud level. Anything above thirty two degrees Fahrenheit, aka freezing. This is where snow melts into rain, and then that rain stays as rain because everything is compared to the entire air is above freezing or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Freezing rain happens when there is a brief shallow cold layer below freezing just also and at the surface. That's when we see freezing rain upon contact with the ground. This is basically when rain enters this brief cold layer at the surface just above that and then makes contact with the ground and then freezes on that contact. Sleet occurs when there is a brief warm layer way up, well above the surface in fact so, and then it has time to refreeze into what we call sleet and this happens before it hits the ground so this is, not, this is why we don't call it freezing rain but rather sleet. And then moving on to snow here, it's just when the entire level of air is below freezing. Meaning there is no layer of warm air below uh, anywhere in that column. So every part of that atmosphere is above freezing 32 degrees Fahrenheit. No, below freezing 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what allows it to see snow. Now, there are times we can see snow at above freezing. However, that would have to be if it is only less than a thousand feet of the last less thousand of feet to the surface where that is above freezing. So now we're going to be looking at this first round of winter station including all kinds of winter station again. It's going to be moving through the Ohio Valley mainly the south of the river. We'll mainly see this Places like Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, but areas along the Ohio River, even a little bit on the other side, could potentially get in on some of the snow and possibly sleet and ice that comes with that as well. And then we do have a new round of wind tube station, again, including all kinds of precipitation types, such as the snow, sleet, ice, and rain that comes along with all this. We're going to be seeing that across basically the same areas that are dealing with this first round right now. So that will be coming from Texas all the way up to Tennessee and Kentucky. 
Again, this first round will be moving through pretty quickly. It should be over Kentucky, Tennessee by Tuesday morning. And then kind of die down, be in the Appalachians, not too far, but about midday on Tuesday. This will be the same time, however, our new round starts up of this wintry mess. Again, this will be across Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Although, it does show a little precipitation, mainly the form of the light snow in places like southern Missouri, Illinois, and Kentucky, in West Virginia. But we'll see sleet, which is indicated actually in the orange-yellowish zones. And then the pink will be indicated by a pink zone. So, we'll see this for the next few days. It'll be lingering until about Wednesday before warmer air eventually wins out across the region, especially across Texas, throughout Wednesday afternoon and evening, and turns this freezing rain back in rain. Again, don't be surprised if there's some sleep coming along with some of this swell, especially if you're in northern Texas, oil, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, not just with this first round, but the second round as well. Again, we're going to see this first one going through Missouri, southern Illinois, Indiana, southern Ohio, and also Kentucky, and even uh, Arkansas. In fact, we just saw on the radar, you can see that it's already happening across many of these places as of right now. But then, we'll be looking a little bit in the near longer term as well. So it doesn't seem like not much is happening, although this is where it really starts to get uncertain. Again, as the second round moves out, we'll see a round of rain across southeast. This will be Thursday into Friday before this whole thing moves out, especially later in the day on Friday, as this will be more so early Friday and throughout Thursday. Things do look to be in a pretty much of a lull on Saturday, but then we'll see something, some clippers start to come down and bring some light snow across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes starting sun, su Sunday morning, and that will continue into Sunday as well. Those will be relatively quick moving, so I don't expect much accumulations from this. There will be rain on the warm side of this, however, I say, although this will be a lot of change to be dealing with, so we're not going to get too fixed on this right now. But all I can say is, it's showing to be going through upper Midwest and the Great Lakes this time, as well as portions of southern Canada. And there is a system going off across the northeast coast that could potentially bring some rain to the coastal areas. Although this is too far to really go any much further than that. However, we do have an, another item of topic that is concerning to us that we have a lot higher confidence on to be happening. Alright, so we're going to be comparing models for the next few days in regards to ice accumulation to account for the various scenarios that are being shown in mall guidance. So GFS has an area of ice accumulations in Oklahoma and Texas, including the DFW Metroplex, Oklahoma City, and other areas surrounding that name a couple of major metropolitan areas in that area. But we do have some ice cream I suspect as well, according to GFS, across Missouri, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky, possibly portions of West Virginia, maybe the southern tips of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio during this time through Friday morning. And then if we look at the NAM here, it is kind of a similar story except it does actually show a more widespread area can kind of connect spheres together, including basically the same areas, although it does... Although, other than that, that is actually pretty similar in the mall guidance. Now, I don't... I'm not going to rely on the Canadian model, or even the era model for that matter, because it's showing rather destructive and deadly amounts of ice, and I'm not going to go into that. Yeah, this is just something that cannot possibly happen in the kind of stuff that we expect to happen. That will say so it's a little farther south. So it goes from much of Texas. And it does expand a little bit further into central southern Texas, and even uh, portions of northern Louisiana and Alabama, Mississippi as well. So that's where that swath of ice goes through. 
And this, this is just another branch of the Canadian model. And not surprisingly, they are showing some very similar, albeit slight differences. Over further north of uh, with the short term Canadian model for the long term. And yeah, this is a very similar story for the Euro. Spans the totals a little further into western Ohio Valley, so tips of Illinois, Indiana, also getting out some of the ice accumulation and as well as portions of Texas, southeast New Mexico. They'll have this here all the way through Arkansas, all the way through Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia. And yeah, this is whole swath right here across the southern half of the United States. Okay, so now we're now we're gonna go into the cold blast. That is also a very important topic of this forecast. So as we look into our temperatures, we do see that there is Arctic cold already going to be spreading through tonight across the Midwest and Northern Plains. So that will be, again, we're going to be highlighting our area where we're seeing below zero in Fahrenheit. And this is the temperatures, by the way. I'll go with the wind chill a little bit. But if you see those tealish and even lighter pinks across the upper Midwest, that's where we are having our sub zero temperatures, of course, just the United States. We'll also see that more across the Rockies as well. As we do move ahead in time, this cold will continue to progress. And we do see some of those colder temperatures start to come in across the northeast as well, and especially across New England. It is showing some pretty wild temperatures across Maine. Some areas in the northeast in the northern portions of Maine could dip to below as thirty below zero. And this is only the temperatures, so I'd say this is pretty, pretty really concerning enough. In fact, really dangerous if anything. However, this Arctic cold does try to sneak back in the United States later in the week. We'll start to see the effects about Thursday, where temperatures will once again dip below zero, and in fact, will probably be continuing to drop throughout the day on Thursday. And then we got some very extremely dangerously cold temperatures coming through Minnesota, especially even a little bit of northwest Wisconsin on th Friday morning. And, again, we'll be talking about this more. And this is where the worst cold is going to is forecast to be. Although this will be definitely something to look at, maybe even some changes. But I think this is of higher confidence at this point, given the setup. Now, this is areas that could dip as below as 40 below zero at times, Friday morning. Especially across North Minnesota and surrounding regions. And even to say though, we could see potentially zero blow as far as Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, and even in sinking back into the New England region. And it is not over for the United States. This cold blast will we expect to continue and even and continue to get worse across the northeast as we unfortunately see similar temperatures in New England and similar values of 30 below, possibly even below that across northern New England indicated this time. This will spread freezing temperatures as far south as the Florida Panhandle if not just above that across Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. But we will see some of those freezing temps as well along pretty much the entirety of the eastern seaboard, although that all seem to die down after the Carolinas um, on Saturday morning. The cold will finally start to retreat on Sunday morning as temps will be quite a bit warmer for the New England region compared to Saturday night. So while this will be definitely something to uh, 
be, get prepared for it for us, given that we are in the home stretch of winter, rather say a mill winter. This is very dangerous cold. And I mean very dangerous, and this is unfortunately the temperature forecast this time, this isn't the wind chills. The wind chills really invade the country. And we get a very widespread area of below freezing. In fact, most of the nation has at least sub freezing wind chills. This is only tomorrow morning. In fact, we see this go as far as southern Texas, even. And then it'll kind of go back northeast. But yeah, again, very widespread wind chills as well below zero, even spanning as far as the Texas Panhandles, and then back across the Midwest, and pretty much the entirety of the Great Lakes by tomorrow morning. And then as we progress later on into tomorrow morning, that's when, although actually tonight is going to be probably the worst of the cold for the upper Midwest, as some of these locations could get as far as 40 below zero for the wind chills. Although temperatures could be not far of a different story either, as we just went over that. Again, there will be um, a break in the Arctic cold for Wednesday and Wednesday morning. Except if you are in the very far reaches up in the west near the Canadian border. But it will try to sink back in again, as we just said, late week. Some of these wind chills could unfortunately get as far as 50 below zero in northeast Minnesota for Friday morning. And then for our freezing wind chills, those will, however, spin as far south as Carolinas and Georgia along the Gulf Coast, although portions of the Florida Panhandle could also see some potentially freezing wind chills Saturday morning. If you thought the temperatures were crazy enough for the New England region, just look at how they are now. We are talking 60 below zero in some places across northern Maine, unfortunately. However, a very widespread area across the northeast could be dealing with sub zero wind chills, even possibly in New York City and Boston and pretty much many north major northeast cities could be dealing with sub zero wind chills Saturday morning. And this is some crazy stuff with what is forecasted for May, especially given the model. And I'm not gonna completely rail on this as there are again multiple models and I'll look detail in this next time. But whatever the GFS is showing as of this latest run is very, very concerning to say the least. This is important to pay for any possible scenario against. I don't. This is not a guarantee that we will see wind chills this low. In fact, it is still possible we could see a better case scenario where these are much closer to zero degrees Fahrenheit, even just for the temperature and the wind chills alike even in northern Maine, but I think it's more and more likely that we will get some extremely cold temperatures of 20, possibly 30 below zero and wind chills up to 50, 60 potentially below zero, and this has been a more consistent signal, so that's why I'm kind of laying down on this topic right now. So again, that is kind of it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to Consider subscribing to this channel if you do actually enjoy it, and be sure to share this with others, especially those who need it for this crucial information. 